and welcome to Top Gear. Now, we've been told that in this new series, we've got to feature more green cars. So, uh, here's one. It's, uh, it's, um, it's really the greenest car we could find, really, uh, and hopefully it will keep the environmentals happy, because coming up now um, is what we've got in this series for normal people. I've got the air conditioning off because it gives me two extra horsepower. <laughs> it's worth it. And it's kinder to the environment, and you use less petrol. And we don't care about that. Look at that! Ooh. And then uh, Humvee, they've announced they're going to make uh, a new version, which they're going to sell out, uh, send over here. There it is. It's a lot smaller than the normal Humvee. Hopefully Greenpeace will be using that as a company car. <laughs> so, um, Pro probably no, not. No, they won't, will they? No, no, I can't <laughs> see that. Now, the MX-5. But I have arrived at this conclusion with a simple and alarming fact that came across my desk only this morning. Electric car sales are down by half, which must mean that loonies are fewer and fewer between. <laughs> really, I genuinely congratulate you for your bravery. Of course, to protect the environment and other road users, the top speed is limited to 199 miles an hour. <laughs> And also, Jeremy, you know, I think you should start now becoming a little more environmentally aware. You know. I am very aware of the environment, uh, and I'm still not interested in it. <laughs> um, you're a businessman now. But it's eight and a half thousand quid it's for fabulous. that. And really good, it's four wheel drive, which really annoys the environmentalists. What did you say? It was a donkey. It's a donkey, it's a little <laughs> mule, and it really does annoy the eco mentalists. Weird beers are good, four wheel drive, but then, oh yeah, so on that basis, oh, it yeah. is a cool car. Very yeah, it is cool a very car. cool car. Amazingly, I was still in the running, but my furious pace meant I now had to make a decision. Do I drive like Al Gore would want me to drive at 55 miles an hour? and possibly make the finish line without having to fill up again, or do I floor it, go really quickly and then have a quick splash and dash? Yes, yes, yes but look at the field, that is ruined. Yes, oh, we that did is... that in just one day. Oops. And there are eco-mentalists who will tell you that that will take about 25,000 years to recover. Yeah, because of our damage. Because of our damage. So, to finish off, I've brought along a toy that causes no damage whatsoever. Yep, a hovercraft. So let's move it on now to brown rice eco cars. <laughs> the trouble is that they're a bit like cod liver oil. Very good for you, but you'd rather have a plate of steak and chips. I mean, take the Toyota Prius here and the Gee Whiz. Very earnest. But there's nothing here to make an ordinary human being go, Whoa, yeah, I want one of those. Three cylinder 1.4 litre diesel engine. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, it's under the... the look, thanks, you've... Broke. I've just saved you a bit of weight there. Wow! If it's an eco car, why have they put that on it? It's so that when you open your bonnet, when your mates are around, they don't realise that you've got a pathetic <laughs> three-cylinder... Three yeah, Do yeah, you yeah. know, and the, can I just ask, there's one other question, there's one... So you're only half a second off JK. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to be able to live this down, Jeremy, that you have the eco-mentalist come on the show and, you know, get... Yeah. <laughs> But Thank I, God for JK. Yes. <laughs> um, no, if the eco mentalists have gone to the top, you're really you're, you're barking up the quite literally the wrong tree because you have a natural gift for it. There can be no doubt about it, and that's an amazingly quick time. Made in the 1920s, and it's got a 46 litre 12 cylinder aeroplane. 46 litre. 46 litre 12 cylinders. I've got a shot of the engine. Here's the actual engine out. Holy! Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's like a Turner painting. with steam, speed, and fire? It's magnificent. I'm going to send great. that to Greenpeace so they can hang it up in their foyer. Yeah, <laughs> they love it actually because it does 0.18 miles to the gallon. Yeah. You kidding? Yeah. So there are many, many reasons why you would not buy an SLS, but there's one why you would. Because it is fantastic. <laughs> Cars these days are all so safe and refined and they're all built in wheat-free, multi-ethnic factories with one eye on Johnny Polar Bear, but this just isn't. <laughs> Nought to 60, 8.6 seconds. That's, that's a lot, too. That's, a lot, that's, that's slow, he means. In fact, it's the same as a 1976 Rover. 
Ooh, Still want good. one? Um, yes, yep, I do. Yep, we do. It's like Cameron Diaz, isn't it? We know that she's a vegetarian. We know she's a committed eco-mentalist. Would you say no? No. You might. <laughs> That is Cameron Diaz with wheels on, that is. Back on the road, Jeremy and I were busy competing to win the hearts and minds of the snowflakes. Because you're young, you'll care very much about the environment, so you'll be very glad to know that unlike the Polo and the Toyota, this doesn't have four cylinders, the Fiesta only has three. And in fact, when it's cruising, it can deactivate one of them and go down to two. That's a world first on a three-cylinder car. And what it means is, it's nicer to polar bears. I should be traveling using traditional methods, husky dogs, sledge, and skis. Yes, and I'm gonna try and beat him in a car. Now that's never been done before. No one has ever tried to drive to the North Pole. And here's why. On the way, he would encounter ice boulders as big as cathedrals, polar bears the size of hatchbacks, temperatures that would freeze the fuel in his tank, and, if Al Gore is to be believed, open water into which he would sink. You have a Prius? No, I do not have a Prius. <laughs> I loathe them with an unbridled passion. Because what I always say, when people say, oh, I've got a Prius, you know, because I really care, I live in a yurt and I, and I care about the environment, my oh, shirt's made from leaves, is my shirt is um, made from leaves is it no no <laughs> i'll tell you the other thing we've got to have is the letter i why because if you put a little i not a capital i a little i with a dot on it it tells everyone who sees it that it's eco and that's okay it does because eco mental is stupid if they're saying the fuel consumption doesn't matter, which is what those owners are saying. Is yeah. Why then are Ford making a hybrid at all? Why are they? Ah, well, no. No, they've got to. Um, it's because there's the environmental rules that Obama brought in. All yeah. the companies have I've to do a, a certain... Yes, fair But enough. Ford are saying the batteries that are part of the hybrid system, OK, they're not some communist plot to combat fake news global warming. <laughs> but that's to say, OK, it's got batteries in it, yes. But they are for charging up your mitosaur, cooling beer and running the coffee maker on a camping trip. <laughs> So the F-150 is a pickup yeah. for carrying a big battery yeah. to cool your beer. Um, serious point now. Uh, in the papers this week, Wiltshire County Council have, and not just in villages, but actually on the A360 as well, removed the white lines because they say this will create a feeling of uncertainty among drivers, <laughs> making them more cautious. Well, yeah, it will. No, that's <laughs> actually not a laughing matter. It's not a laughing it's matter. Not. Seriously, someone's going to die as a result of this. Now, I don't mind if environmentalists who dream this kind of stuff up sit at home with their guardians. What you do in the privacy of your own kitchen is fine. Eat your vegetables, wear your potato shoes, don't bring your <laughs> idiotic ideas onto the road, OK? Someone will be killed. It really is impossible to overemphasize the importance of what has been achieved here today. Look at what I'm driving. A big, heavy, thirsty four-wheel drive car. And the only waste product is some juicy tomatoes. You thought Greenpeace would save the world, but no! It's Top Gear. We've done it. Where's it gone? It's time for a question. And the question is, where is the best driving road in the world? Something that has everything. The challenging bends, no traffic, the great views, the long, fast straights, the lot. Yep. Uh, now, it's unlikely to be here because uh, everyone does five. It's not going to be here because everyone's on drugs. That's all just full of ox. Uh, Al Gore says that's gone, so it's not going to be down there. That's full of spiders. Signposts here are all full of gibberish. Underneath that sleek... It's all carbon fibre, that bodywork. Mm -hmm. It's uh, V8, two superchargers on mm -hmm. it. It's putting out a thousand brake horsepower. 250 miles an hour plus. Yeah, a thousand brake horsepower. And it, isn't it green? Well, here's the clever thing. Is it runs on biofuel. So, technically, that's a green car yeah. right there. Look, that's a price. Could buy Al Gore one. Oh, yes. How much is it? Uh, it, it is, it's, it's quite costly. How much? £1,070,000. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, now. Uh, Hilary Benn, the Environment Secretary, has been on the television this week and said that he thinks the rise in fuel costs is a good thing because it will encourage people to use their cars less. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. And let's not worry that they've closed all the post offices, the schools, the pharmacies, the doctors, everything in my area because I can always drive to the nearest town. No, I can't then. That's this, I'll tell you what this is. I'll tell you what this is. This is from chapter one in Left Wing Dictatorship Handbook. Oh, God. Think, no, listen, it is. Stalin, okay? First thing he did, limit movement. Second thing, ID cards. Know what I'm saying? Third thing is curfews. Red Ruth this week in Cornwall, curfew. If you're not at home by nine o'clock, you're down the Lou Bianca Gordon Brown will pull your fingernails out. <laughs> you know my words? We've just proved Gordon Brown is Stalin. Oh, good news. What? Because behind the front seats, there are 324 laptop-style batteries, which power a silent, polar bear-friendly electric motor. This means that even the most frizzy-haired sandal enthusiast would welcome this car into their city centre. It's like that other two-seater electric car, the G-Wiz. It's Al Gore with a windscreen wiper. This car would be less annoying to eco-mentalists if its engine ran on sliced dolphin. Fuel economy? Well, I doubt this will be the official transport at the next Greenpeace annual conference. All I'll say is they thought it best to fit two fuel tanks. You change over using this switch up here. Then he discovered that Whitby Jet is actually this. It, it looks like coal. It is coal. Is it? Thing is, though, they've worked out, obviously, you can't burn coal anymore because Al Gore goes nuts and a polar bear falls over. So they polish it up and then say it's precious. Now, you ready for this? The Americans have announced their green car of the year. Oh, good, it'll be a Toyota Prius. So it isn't. Move. Electric thing? It's nope. a Prius Toyota. No. Nope. It's going to be a Prius, so... It isn't. I've got a photograph of it here. There you go. That's not a Prius. No, that's Whoa. a six-litre V8 Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> that's a green car I'm of the year. I'm absolutely not joking. Uh, no, it's a hybrid. They put a tiny, weeny little electric motor in it somewhere. There you are. That's a hybrid. And they've fallen for it. Does 21 miles to the gallon. That's green. It is very green. I'd say the good cars for me, Lexus. What? Particularly, actually, the GS, the one in the middle. I'm with you. The yeah. hybrid one, though. No, no, under this one, OK? This looks like a normal car. Great thing is, OK, its batteries will only take you less than a mile, which means most of the time you're on the V6. You know, you're chewing fuel, you're warming the world up, everybody's happy, OK? It's very quiet, it's very fast, it's very, very comfortable. And, of course, you can drive it to London, do U-turns on Piccadilly all day long. Ken Livingston can't charge you a penny. Brilliant it's car. A it's a properly brilliant <laughs> car, that. I'm going to put, like, a little 9-volt battery in a Hummer. <laughs> It's a hybrid. <laughs> Do you know how many vice presidents have subsequently made it to president? Two. Three. No. Four. Eighty-four. Seven. We're going to be here a long time. <laughs> if, you know. if you know the answer, then we won't be. No, I do, I do know the answer. <laughs> well, it's up to you how long we spend doing it. Well, because we're going to go two, three, four, we have to wait until you get to 14. Then I go, well done, Paul. 14. 14. 14. 14. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Al Gore was vice president, um, and then, of course, he went on to be a twat. But uh, that's not... <laughs> Is that largely on his views on the environment, Jeremy? Mm. <laughs> mm. I'm not entirely certain everyone here in this part of London is with me on that one, so we'll yeah. brush it off. <laughs> what are your in. views on the environment, Jeremy? Not the same as everybody's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if he's right, I'm out of a job. Um... We're out of a planet. <laughs> <laughs> Former presidential candidate Al Gore launched a scathing attack on President Bush this week. He said, Bush leads a renegade band of right-wing enthusiasts. Fair enough. There's been a gross and excessive power grab by Bush-friendly business interests. Can't argue with that. And pollution could literally end civilization. Hippie lunatic. Um... <laughs> And so, uh, now, yes, uh, you may have noticed this week that some uh, Greenpeace activists broke into the Land Rover factory, chained themselves to the production line, claiming that Range Rovers 
I don't know what they claim they do, but they do something wrong anyway. Yeah. So um, we're kind of with Greenpeace on this. We think it's ridiculous that uh, town and city centres are clogged up with enormous gas-guzzling vehicles that uh, only have one person on board. So we thought that we'd stage a protest of our own. Yeah. And here it is. This is Hammersmith Bus Depot at rush hour, uh, and look, we've handcuffed ourselves to a bus. Buses kill 48 badges a week. Buses burn planets. CFCs coming out of the back of that bus are enough to fill the Pacific Ocean every three weeks. You're making this stuff up. That's what you do to get in the papers. You just make up statistics, they get printed, and you sound really good. Right. What do we want? A Range Rover! Why do we want it? As soon as we can arrange easy finance. Well, right. as soon as the super comes out. Yeah, well, See, the bus driver was so angry, he had to come up and ask for an autograph. Yeah, and then, and then, look, they put a bus in front of us so we couldn't be seen by all the passengers, but we just chained ourselves to that one, then. <laughs> the cold, dead fingers will have to be prized from this bus. The only way I'm leaving this bus is without this arm. Yeah. Yep. Once in a man's life, you yeah. have to just do the right Put your feet down and yeah. say, that. Hello. Yeah, now you see what happened here is with the police to really nice policemen, they really were, and they said they were they've got better things to do really than deal with three middle class boys chained to a bus and <laughs> wouldn't mind going away. So uh, this this is what happened. Yeah. We, <laughs> we ran away. We ran away. We ran away. We're not as good at protesting, oh. I think, as Greenpeace. What's our first go at it? We're new to it. Yeah. Uh, now And that is pretty much the end of the show. Looking at the bus lane. No, still nothing going on there. I think next week we won't bother doing anything to do with the environment. In fact, I think we might kick a couple of barn owls to death just for fun. 